Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to sit down and do a super casual video. I honestly just like sat down, did my makeup, chatted with you guys in today's video. I wore this look in a few of my recent videos and a lot of you guys were asking me how I got it. So I thought I would recreate it for you guys in today's video. A lot of you guys have been asking for, well, I probably already told you in the intro, so I'll skip that part. But my face is a little bit red today. My eyes are red. I'm just struggling with the worst allergies this season. I did prime my eyes, so I'm just going to set them into place with like a light shadow honestly I don't know if I've always had allergies like every year or if it's new this year because I wake up every single day feeling awful <laughs> which is not a fun way to start the day my face is always red my eyes are always red and watering and I'm like 100% sure it's seasonal so I'm kind of ready for fall to go it just sucks because fall is like one of my favorite seasons but I just every time I like leave the house or just even like go outside to take the dogs for a walk I just start sneezing like crazy so I don't know, I'm just kind of ready for winter. So I'm going to use two different palettes today. I'm going to use the e.l.f. Opposites Attract palette. I don't know if you guys can see it with my mirror. I really like this palette. And I was going to do a full review on both of these palettes and a few other palettes, including the Naked Cherry, but time is just getting away from me so quickly. So I thought instead I would use these two palettes in today's video. So we'll start with the e.l.f. Opposites Attract palette, and then I will talk about the Urban Decay Elements palette afterwards. This e.l.f. palette, is so good and I was excited when I saw they were releasing it because it's supposed to have a brand new formula it comes with 18 different shadows and you get a mix of warm shadows and cool toned shadows like half of the palettes warm half of the palette is cool but I really like this palette it's mainly a matte eyeshadow palette with a few shimmer shadows and the shimmer shadows are good they're very lightweight so you can build them up they're not like Juvia's Place pigmented or ColourPop metallic shadows but they are good metallic shadows and the matte shadows are good they blend really well they're a little powdery you have to build some of them up but honestly for $14 I think this palette's a great option so I'm going to start with the shade Witty, which is like a cool toned brown, and just use that as a transition color. Like I said, they are powdery, so you honestly just have to go in with a small amount, and then depending on the color, sometimes you have to build it up. Like some of the darker shades or the brighter shades, I have to go in to build them up to get the pigmentation that I want, but it's perfectly fine. If you guys tried their best friend eyeshadow duos, that's what this formula reminds me of. And those are some of my favorite e.l.f. shadows. I always said I wanted them to create a palette out of that formula, and I think it's the same formula. Honestly, it feels the same to me, so I was excited to discover that they were so similar. I do have my pugs in the room today, so if you hear any like, snorting or piggy noises that is just my pugs this is kennedy my girl pug i don't usually talk about them on camera because it is a beauty channel and not everyone is a pet lover but pugs are so squishy and it was just national pug day so i thought i would show her she is the one in like most of my pictures in my instagram posts because my other pug charlie literally lays under a blanket all day long hi kenny <laughs> kenny is like my little like fun pug she's always trying to make me laugh she's always like my little shadow and she is so much fun pugs are honestly like such a fun pet but it's their nap time so i should probably let them go take their little nap so I want to do a green eyeshadow look, so I'm going to go in with the shade Wise, and this is just a Luxie 227 blending brush, and I'm just going to blend this color in my outer corner and my crease. I'm not going to be super precise. I don't want to blend the color too high because I always have a tendency to get out of hand with my eyeshadow, but I will go back in and kind of intensify it after I lay down the metallic shadows. After the Makeup Revolution Emily Noel palette was released, I noticed a lot of people talking about the fact that they don't necessarily want in intensely pigmented shadows and I guess that was something that I always knew but it wasn't something that I've always talked about in my review videos I do try to touch on that but for me I love super super intense shadows rather than shadows that you can build but after like playing with that palette and hearing reviews I can definitely appreciate why people don't want super intense pigmented shadows right off the bat and I think that this palette is a good example of a palette that builds really well as you guys can see like the green shadow just builds up well and as you first start applying it, it's a little bit lighter. It looks like slightly patchy, but as you keep going in and adding more shadow and blending, it looks really even and smooth. So I just, I'm really impressed by the quality of this palette. All right, I'm pretty much going to stop there on this eye. Let me do the other eye and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm going to come back to the Opposites Attract palette, but I am going to go in with the Urban Decay Elements palette. First of all, this palette is a lot larger than I thought it was going to be. The packaging is really beautiful, but it is slightly bulky, so I know a lot of you guys prefer like really sleek, thin palettes, so just keep that in mind. This is a limited edition holiday palette, so it's not going to be around forever. It does have a very large mirror, and then it has a bunch of shadows. There are a few matte colors in here, but they're mainly warm-toned mattes, but in general, it has a lot of like glittery, iridescent or metallic shadows. The shadows on the outside are larger than the shadows on the inside and then you get like this center shade which isn't my favorite. It's just like a chunky white glitter. It doesn't look that great layered onto other shadows or as a highlight so I usually skip over that one. And I think in general as a whole it performs really well. My friend Kaylee did a really good review on this so I'm actually going to link her video in the description box below if you guys want a super detailed review. So I'm going to take this dark green and place that all over the lid. These metallic shadows are really, really beautiful. They go on nicely with your finger, but of course you can use a brush. It's not like you have to like drag the shadow on or even wet your brush. Like that's without even wetting a brush, which I think is amazing. I really do think it is a high quality formula. You could totally stop there, but I do think the other greens look really pretty layered on top. So I'm going to take this shade, which is called Secret Keeper, and just place that in the inner half of my eye. These feel a little bit dry when you touch them, but they're so pigmented. Like they just go on the eyes so beautifully. I am all about like super super pigmented shadows so these are my type of shadows personally. So I'm just focusing this on the inner half of the eye because I do want to keep the outer corner a little bit darker and then I'm actually going to take the gold shade as well. This one is called Fool's Gold and I'm just going to apply that to like the center of the lid and I just think it gives the whole look I don't know, like just like a little something extra. It gives it a lot of dimension and it just looks like you did something just to create some really pretty dimension on the eyes. It just, it adds just like a little something extra. So I'm just kind of taking it, I guess more so on like the, I'm focusing it on the lid, but also just kind of blending it so it blends with the other shades on the eyes. So if you guys are looking for a good accent palette for the holiday season, this one is really nice. I personally don't find that I get a lot of complete looks using this palette because it is kind of like a rainbow palette in my opinion. There are rainbow shades, there are some neutrals, but I tend to combine it with other palettes. So I would use like these colors with my Naked Cherry. I use these colors with like the e.l.f. palette a lot. If you are the type of person that needs to get a ton of complete looks out of one palette, this one might not be the ideal option, not that it's not possible, I just find that when I look at it, sometimes I just see it as more of an accent palette. So that's pretty much it for the eye look. I'm just going to go back in with the green matte shadow and define the crease a little bit more. And then if I find that I blend away the lid shade, I'll just go back in and add a little bit more of the metallic shadow. But I just want this to be pretty, pretty dark and defined, I guess. Okay, let me just clean up the edges and then I'll do my eyeliner. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the face and then I'll finish up the eyes. I'm going to take the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, which is my go-to primer, especially during the fall and the winter. And I'm just going to apply this to my skin. It is super, super moisturizing. Honestly, it makes every single foundation just go on so, so beautifully. And if you struggle with dry skin, you're going to love it. I have oily skin, but honestly, I think I have more combo skin these days because I do struggle with a little bit of dryness, but I really work this product into my skin because it does just really refresh your skin and make it feel really moisturized. And then like I said, all of my products go on top really beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Stick Foundation. I told you guys that I was going to use this in an upcoming video because I do talk about it on my channel so much, especially once fall and winter roll around, but I haven't... I don't know if I've ever used it on camera. I'm sure I have at one point or another. It's such a good foundation and I wanna show you how well it works. So I have two shades. I have Ivory and Vanilla. I think Vanilla is a little bit of a better match for me. Ivory is a little bit, wait. Okay, so that's what Vanilla looks like and that's what Ivory looks like. Vanilla is probably a better match, but I'm probably going to go in with mainly Vanilla and then use a little bit of Ivory. I'm trying to use both of them up and then once I do finish them, I'll kind of go and purchase my ideal shade, which I'm not 100% sure what my ideal shade is because they're, like they have a pretty good color range, at least what I remember from, what am I saying? At least from what I remember from like the last time I looked online. So I probably even used a little bit too much to be honest with you guys because this foundation blends out so beautifully. I didn't even add any of the shade Ivory. I take a brush. This is the, you guys always ask me, oh, shoot, it never has a number on it. I need to write it down. It is a crown 
foundation brush. I'll I will put it in the description box below. I got it in a boxy charm. So it actually blends out really, really beautifully. It's so smooth and creamy and it looks pretty natural on the skin even though it gives great coverage. I just like to really buff it into my skin. So I have oily skin and it doesn't hold up all day on my skin. I'm actually going to use it with a mattifying powder today to see if, oh shoot, to see if that helps because I usually use it I don't know what powder I usually use it with. Honestly, this is a foundation that I use during the fall and the winter, so it's been a long time since I've used it regularly. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the darker shade Ivory because I think this is a little bit too light and just mix that in to see if I can get more of like my skin tone. I kind of have a feeling if I use it with a mattifying powder that it will last a little bit longer on the skin. It usually lasts a good like six to eight hours. Mm, I don't know about eight hours, maybe more like six hours before getting oily but it gives a really beautiful coverage as you guys can tell but I like it because it doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin like it just blends into the skin you can buff it into the skin whereas with more like liquid matte foundations they have a tendency to look like you're wearing a thick layer of foundation and I did use a lot because I was mixing the shades together and sometimes when I'm not paying attention I just add a little bit too much but you could even go in with less and just like really buff it out and get more of a light layer and still get pretty good coverage but as you guys can tell it gives really good coverage it has like a really beautiful almost like satin finish so if you have dry skin I think you're just going to love it so so much a little bit does go a long way but I went in with quite a bit but whatever I'm going to use the Born this way multi-use sculpting concealer in the shade almond and I'm just going to take a small amount and blend that out this is pretty yellow toned so I think it will balance out the fact that the foundation's a little bit off I'm just going to use the Smashbox cream cheek brush this has been my number one concealer since I tried it what month did I try it? I want to say August. I, I honestly haven't used any other concealer. On occasion, I'll use the ColourPop concealer, and I do still love that concealer. I also love wearing it as foundation because it just gives good coverage, but it's very lightweight. It's so, so easy. Like, if I'm in a hurry, I'll just apply that on my face and buff it out, and it gives good coverage, and it stays in place. Anyways, this concealer is my favorite because it just stays in place really, really well on my oily skin. But again, it has more of like a satin finish. So it's not completely matte. It's not drying. It will settle into your fine lines if you don't set it. But once it's set, it stays in place. Okay, so for powder, I'm using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I'm just going to take the Smashbox Blurring Concealer Brush and just use this under my eyes. I'm not 100% sure if this locks my concealer into place under the eyes as well as maybe like the Urban Decay Velvetizer which is what I normally use. Okay so I've never tried this foundation and this powder together. I like them both separately. I love the foundation during the fall and the winter but like I said it doesn't last all day on me because my skin is oily and this powder is so mattifying so I kind of wonder if they're going to be like the perfect combination so we'll see i'll use the smashbox blurring foundation brush this is like my go-to powder brush and just stipple this powder all over my face to set my foundation into place this powder has been a favorite of mine over the past month because it is so mattifying and in general i go in with more hydrating products all over my face because they're more comfortable i just think they look more skin like i don't typically reach for a ton of like super mattifying products in terms of like face primer and foundation and concealer and powder but because i do use more of like a moisturizing primer and sometimes a moisturizing foundation and concealer it's sometimes nice to go in with a mattifying powder just to lock everything into place all right so i'm going to do my brows and then i will finish up the eyes before i go in with the rest of the face i will do my brows on camera because i've been talking about a few products for a little while so usually i use the anastasia brow whiz in espresso i can't find that right now so i've kind of been using this one on and off as well it is the nyx micro brow pencil in the shade espresso okay so the first thing i do is just comb all of my brow hairs up and my brows they're growing in it's been a long long process i mean this one is not growing in as much as this one i always feel like you have that one brow that's so much better and for me it's my right brow but they're getting there i think it's going to just be just a long process. So after I brush everything upwards, I just take the pencil, and this is slightly more red tone than the Anastasia pencil, but it works. And then I just fill in underneath. So this is really nice for just defining the brow. 
and I just kind of fill it in in a shape that I want. And then I'll just take the spoolie and brush it out again so it's not super harsh. But I just think it makes it look a little more natural. And so then I'll just go in and kind of do the same thing to the top and just like lightly follow my natural brow shape and just fill them in because I want them to look a little bit more bold. The front of my brow is always where I have to be a little bit more careful because I think that's why I have a tendency to go heavy handed and then it looks super fake and just like squared off. So, I mean, it's always a struggle. They're In the end, they're just brows, but I just try to do the best I can without going crazy. <laughs> but um, then I usually just go in with a little bit of concealer and clean them up. So this is just the ColourPop concealer. So I'm just going to go in with the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. This gel is amazing. So I try to fill them in the best that I can, but this gel honestly makes them look a little bit more natural. It's like a waxy gel, and I didn't think I was going to like this the first time I used it, but it just makes my brows look a little bushier, a little bit thicker, more, I guess, like fluffy and it looks like I actually have brow hairs rather than just like a brow product all over my eyes. So what I do again is I just kind of brush all of my brows upwards and this makes them look so much thicker than they are. Now if you aren't into like super thick or bold brows you probably don't want to brush them upwards and I'll kind of like go in and just like smooth some of them down but in general it just makes them look like so fluffy and thick okay as I'm letting my brows dry I'm just going to do the lower lash line I totally realized I forgot to explain what I'm doing so I just mixed this shade right here which is like the medium green just going to pick up a little bit more of that with the green matte shadow in the elf palette and I'm just blending that on the lower lash line and then I'm just going to take the Urban Decay 24 7 glide on eye pencil in the shade mildew which is such a gross name, but I'm just going to use this on my waterline just to add a little pop of green. I'm also going to take the 24-7 Glide On Pencil in the shade Stash, which is a little bit lighter, and add that on top because I think Mildew is just a little bit too dark, so mixing them together should be like the perfect shade. All right, I'm just going to add like a light shadow under the brow bone, just a matte shadow because I don't want to add anything too intense. Just like something to lightly highlight and then also in the inner corner even though I think I'll go in with like a gold in the inner corner maybe. Okay, so I'm going to take the Tarte Man Eater Mascara, which I just started using last week, and it's just a good all-around mascara. It makes your lashes look dramatic and voluminous and long. It does a really, really good job, but it also separates them, which I think is really key because a lot of mascaras make your lashes look clumpy, but this one really separates them, which I think is really nice. So I'm just going to use this. All right, I hope you guys can tell like how much of a difference that mascara made. It just makes my lashes look really long and dramatic. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the face. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This is their face sculpting and highlighting duo. The highlighter is great for like an everyday, more subtle highlighter. And when I go in with more natural makeup, that's what I typically use. But I do like the contour shade, whether I do like pretty dramatic makeup or pretty light makeup. It just blends well. So I'm going to use the Crown Brush SS023 Jumbo Kabuki Fan, which is a really long name. Again, I believe I got this one in a BoxyCharm. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was a subscription box, but I like this color because I don't know, like it's a little bit more warm toned than I would typically use as like a contour shade, but I feel like it kind of works. Um, this is my favorite brush too because it's just like quick and easy so it kind of contours but it also kind of bronzes because it is so large. You're not getting an overly precise contour. Okay, so for blush, I got this Hourglass Trio from Nordstrom when I was purchasing a few Charlotte Tilbury products. I bought a bunch of Charlotte Tilbury products because I wanted to try out the brand. It's like one of the only cruelty-free luxury brands, and I did use a bunch of their products in my last like fall Get Ready With Me if you want to check it out. But I got this Hourglass Trio. It comes with three different products, so you get Surreal Glow, Luminous Flush, and Mood Exposure. So Surreal Glow, Luminous Flush and Mood Exposure. I think these two are permanent, but I don't know if this one is, and this is like my favorite shade. I went on the Nordstrom website a few days later and it was like sold out. I believe this palette is from Holiday last year, so it's not like a new palette, and they must have just had like a few left over and I got one of the last ones. And I was planning on buying an Hourglass palette this year, but the one that I was looking at had shades 
like two or three of the shades were already shades that I own in my collection in like the full size version. So I didn't think I needed it. So in the meantime, I'm happy with this trio because the blushes are pretty big. They're definitely bigger than mini blushes. I don't know if they're technically full sized, but they're large. Like I just honestly don't think I'll hit pan on these anytime soon. A lot of times I mix like the lighter two shades and then mood exposure is one of my favorites. So I'm just mainly using the lightest shade on my cheeks today. I think I had a little bit of like a pink blush left over on this brush, but that's fine. So I am going to use my Becca highlighter in Champagne Pop. It's just my favorite gold highlighter. It's so pretty on the face, and I just think it looks really pretty with this blush. It's definitely not like a natural, subtle highlight, at least on my skin tone, and you can build it up to look pretty intense, but I just like it. It makes my skin look glowy and beautiful, and I just like apply it everywhere. <laughs> then I'm just going to take a little bit in the inner corner, And then for lips, I'm just using the Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick in the shade Sand, which is a really, really light nude. I actually wore this when I did this look in a video that I wore, and a lot of you guys said you loved the lip color. I don't typically wear lip colors so light, but I think it draws a lot of the attention to the eyes rather than the lips. So I do think it pairs well with more dramatic eye looks. I'm actually going to skip lip liner, but I am going to apply it, let it dry, and then apply a second coat because it is fairly light, so I think it needs two coats, and I'm not using a lip liner because I'm just too lazy, to be honest, and these stay in place really well without a lip liner. Okay, guys, so that is it. That is pretty much the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun sitting down with you and chatting and doing my makeup and just using some of my current favorites. I think for one of my upcoming videos, I might do something more on the natural side where I use like two shadows and it takes me like 10 minutes to get ready because I think a lot of times when I do my makeup on camera, it's pretty dramatic because that's what I like to do, but I know that's not for everybody. So if you wanna see something a little more simple, a little more like everyday wearable, I can definitely do that. I think I'm going to skip my hair today. I've been trying to let it air dry and either embrace like my natural curls or just like put it in like a bun and leave it because it's very, very dry. I need to lay off the heat and I use like a deep conditioner today. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you at my next video. Bye.